Your SEO probably sucks and it's going to continue performing bad in 2025 unless you look at and fix these three main things. I've reviewed close to thousands of websites over the past two years. And in this video, I'm going to show you the top three main things that almost everybody gets wrong and what you can do to fix them. And if you're wondering right away, well, why should I trust a random guy on YouTube? I 100% agree and I like the way that you think. My name is Nico. I run an AI powered SEO agency and I run an online community where we help simplify SEO and we help maximize your search engine optimization with AI tools and automations. We teach you how to do this. We've been luck We've been lucky enough to help hundreds of people do this, like Will, who in a matter of weeks, he was able to rank number one for Google for the first time ever on a particular local keyword that he was after. Or Michael, that even in a matter of weeks, he was started, he started to finally see some organic traffic going to his website from a, a few of the fundamental things that we taught him. Because SEO doesn't have to be complicated, but you need to get the fundamentals right. And the thing is that you probably tried SEO yourself if you're watching this video and it just didn't work. You had a lot of people telling you that it's the way to go. You don't have to pay, you don't have to pay for ads, but you just had no luck doing it. Or even worse, you paid an agency, you gave it a couple of weeks and they got no organic traffic for you, which really sucks. And it didn't help that you're probably a little bit impatient with it because SEO takes a little bit. Let's get to the three main reasons of why your SEO sucks and what you can do to fix it. There are three main components and each component we need, we're gonna dive into a little bit deeper so we can understand them and see how we can fix them. There's on-site SEO, content quality, and backlinks. So let's get to the first one right away. With on-site SEO, I see these three main things often that people get wrong all the time. That's site speed, keyword optimization, UX or user design, user experience and conversions. It's not to say that this is all on-site SEO. There's a lot more to on-site SEO, but these are the things that I see people get wrong all the time. It's just so we get an understanding, on-site SEO, all the things you can do to your website on the actual website itself. So let's go to the first one, which is site speed. Why do we want to look at that? Well, let's start with the fact that when you go on your website, something that we need to understand, when you go into your website, their experience will change vastly between when somebody else goes on your website because you frequent your website somewhat on a regular basis. And modern browsers like Chrome, Brave, or Mozilla and Firefox, they'll save the files of that website on your local computer so that next time you go on your, on your website, it can load it a lot quicker. But when somebody new goes on your website for the first time, and first impressions really matter here, they need to call the files from the server. And sometimes if your website's not optimized, it'll load very slowly. So then how do we know if our website is actually loading slow or quick? There's a lot of free tests that you can do here, like GT Metrics, Page Speed Insights. And I'm gonna leave links to everything that I talk about below in the resources, it would be very, very easy for you to access absolutely everything that I touched on. So GT Metrics, for example, I'll do this uh, test again. We're gonna use this website as an example. It's just a random website that I picked and I'm going to put it in the analyze button here. And I'm gonna do the same with Google's test page speed insights. And you might be wondering, well, why do I wanna test it with two different tools? It's great having two data sources telling you how quickly or slowly your website is loading. And then it actually tells you why it's loading slow and then what you can do about it. Let's take a look at GT metrics whilst the Google one is loading. And it's telling me that I've got a grade of D, meaning A, B, C, D, E, F, A being the best, F being the worst. And it's loading pretty, pretty slow here. And if I click down on these components telling me why it's loading slow, I can get a deeper understanding here of why. I need to, the server response time is very slow. It's even telling me what I can do to fix it. I can place in a plugin like WordPress Rocket. This is, must be a WordPress website. And if I go on the next one, the medium high alert, it's telling me that, well, it's got really heavy images. And that's one of the main things that I see people get wrong. They upload PNGs or heavy web or heavy JPEGs to their websites. You don't want that. You want a file name called a WebP file. WebP are extremely light and high quality. It was an image format made by Google a couple of years ago, but it's a lot lighter, meaning that your website's going to load a lot quicker if you've got WebP files, not JPEGs or PNGs. So that's the first thing you can do right away. 
And if we look at PageSpeed Insight, the other PageSpeed tool test from Google, it's telling us that the mobile is loading very slow and so is the desktop. Here's another important point, a component. The mobile loading time speed will differ from the desktop loading time speed. And the most important one here is mobile, at least for 90% of the industries there. So you need to make sure that your mobile is loading very quickly. The next on-site component we have is keyword optimization. And people tend to overcomplicate keyword research, keyword optimization, and it seems like a black art that a lot of people get confused over. In this instance, when I mean keyword optimization, keyword optimization is understanding, well, what is the main service offer or product that I offer? And do I have that keyword inserted in the website somewhere? For example, I know that this website offers life coaching because I had to dig around and, and way too much to be able to find out what that is. But this isn't telling or telling me anywhere that it, they do life coaching at all. So even this new little banner, which I don't recommend uh, rotating banners as well, there's nothing that says life coaching. And if I have a look at their metadata, which is really important as well, and I go to overviews, I'm gonna show you where to get links to all these little applications that I use as well. The title tag, which is the main keywords that you want Google to understand of what I do as a service or offer of my product, says self-leadership mastery, unleash your potential, master your path. That is extremely vague. Master your path and unleash your potential to what? Jiu-jitsu, playing chess, cooking, what? So I need to get very defined in the keywords that I choose there. If you're a local business, let's say you're a local plumber somewhere in Melbourne, for example, you need to have plumber in Melbourne, for example. Not to mention they're missing the meta description, but I'm not gonna go down that rabbit hole at the moment because I just wanna go and make sure that we do this nice and quick, but make sure you have the keyword components there. And even when we go down, there's no other keywords, H1, H2s, telling me that this is a lifestyle uh, coaching component. There's nothing. Even if we look at here at the headers, H1 and H2s, there's nothing indicating to Google that the main keyword that I want to be related with is life coaching. Nice and simple, but people get this wrong all the time. And if you don't know what keyword it is that you should be putting on your website, just search for what you think people are searching for or the product that'll give you an understanding of what keywords you need to place in there. You can also do a little bit of keyword research. I'll leave a link to this tool right away. Let's, for example, do life coaching or lifestyle coaching in the United States. I'll limit it to 40 keywords and I'll see what the related keywords are to lifestyle coaching, life coaching, life coaching near me how to become a life coach, all these things. So you might be able to pick the keyword that relates closer to the service you're providing and place that into your website in a natural manner. The next one for on-site SEO is user experience and conversions. User experience, I'm saying how nice your website is to navigate, how easy it is. But probably more important than that is your conversion rate optimization. Meaning out of all the people that go on your website, how many actually take your action or the action that you want them to take? By now, contact us or whatever that is. And if I land on this website, this is another random website. It looks very cute with a photo of the dogs. I know that they offer dog coaching services. There's nothing here that tells me coach services or dog training services. And importantly, they don't have a call to action. Here, what I would do is put a button around here that says, I don't know, free consultation, contact us now, train your dog today, whatever that is, so that the moment that I land on the website, I know, oh, I'm supposed to be calling them or whatever that is. And you might think, well, that's silly. Surely people know that. But in my experience, never underestimate stupidity in large numbers, particularly in the internet. I know that sounds mean, but you need to make it extremely obvious that they're supposed to be doing something on your website. And you might say, well, yeah, I've got that further down on my site. But if you install any heat map software that tells you how much people actually scroll down, the more you get people to scroll down, the more you lose people. So you wanna give yourself the highest opportunity of people clicking that button that you want them to click, so put it at the top. Next, we have content quality. This is very, very broad in terms of what we mean by content quality. But, it, um, but I'll try to summarize it, summarize it as much as I can. Value and relevance. 
Meaning, well, if I offer a dog training services, do I have blog content that demonstrates I offer value through my blogs that will help people learn about how to train their dog and how to train their puppy? For example, this one is writing about is it worth uh, getting your is it worth getting dog training or what are the best ages to train a dog? That is really relevant content that might help people in their journey with dog training. It's really really good. I would say they're answering the user's search intent, which is what Google wants you to do with the content. And if you have no idea how to find the right content to write, to help people, to provide a valuable content, a very easy strategy is to go to a site called People Also Asked. There's many tools like this and placing your keyword there, for example, dog training, placing all the other parameters that re relate to you, whether it's English, United States and everything else. I'm going to go to live search and this is going to give me all of the frequently asked questions about that keyword, in this instance, dog training that people are asking. Then I can go and write a blog that answers a question and then I'm providing value because I'm answering the questions that people are asking. Now there are many more content strategies, but this is a very easy one. I've also done a video previously that looks like this is a strategy on how to get absolute gold mines worth of high quality content using Reddit. I'll leave a link to that so you can access that here. Now you see I've got all these questions that I can answer in a couple of blogs. With that, people will ask me, well, can I generate AI content and will Google penalize the content that I generate with AI? Let me answer that question by saying no, Google doesn't penalize AI generated content. They do penalize spammy content, meaning content that doesn't add value to anyone. You can read more about it in Google Search Central and they are very clear. They say they reward high quality content however it's produced. If you want a more detailed tutorial on how to write content with ChatGPT or Machine AI, which is another tool that we use to be able to maximize the amount of content that you write, I'll leave all the resources linked below. And then content strategy. How do I go about understanding what I should write about? An easy to follow strategy is grab all your services, right? Let's look at this website here with dog training. I know that there's services, they offer puppy school services, leash reactivity, general obedience, and canine nose work. I don't know what that is. But then I could take puppy dog school and try to write as much content as I can that's valuable, that answers the user's search intent using things like also asked to go, well, what are people asking about how to train puppies and puppy dog training and potty training for puppies and start writing about that. And then I need to make sure that I naturally link those blogs about puppy training to my main services page, which is the puppy school page. And I do the same with leash reactivity and general obedience and all the other services that I might have. And finally, one of the things that perhaps is more the most taboo or black magic-esque thing around SEO is backlinks and why they're so important. So why do backlinks actually matter? Well, you can think of backlinks as the road of the internet, connecting different websites, kind of like different highways to different cities. So every road or every backlink leading to your website makes it easy for the search engine to find your website or to crawl it and to navigate its content. It's also a really good way for Google to verify how trustworthy is your content because the more people that are linking to you, meaning the more external domains, the other websites linking to your website, the more it must mean, well, your content must be providing value or must be very relevant for people to link to you. In essence, the more high quality roads or backlinks you have to your website, the better your SEO will be. Now, there's a lot of things here in terms of not all backlinks are created equal. When you're getting your backlinks, try to concentrate on the quality of it, not the quantity of it. In general, don't buy backlinks from Fiverr <laughs> and make sure that it makes contextual relevance for you to backlink, for you to get a backlink from a website. What do I mean here? Contextual relevance. So if I'm trying to get a backlink for this website that is about dog training, I should probably get a backlink from a website that is a dog groomer or another dog training service or maybe a dog toy shop, something that is relevant to the industry. It makes no sense for me getting a web a link from a website that is about uh, selling telephones, whatever, or selling computer gear to this website because it makes no contextual sense.
Now, how to get backlinks is a very, very different story and a very, very difficult thing to do for a lot of people. The quick way to get them, for example, for a localized business, you can always search for free business directories in my area. Let's do that now, for example. So if I search for free business directories in Melbourne, I should get some sort of blog post telling me, there you go, for example, the ultimate list of 53 Australian business directories. They're going to help you then these are business directories where you can place your website's information, such as the address, phone number, and most importantly, the URL, and you'll get some backlinks to your website. This will make Google understand that you actually are a real business because a lot of these things are pointing towards you. So this is really, really good. The other thing is writing good content will generally bring you really, really good backlinks, but that is a bit of a hoping game where you try to write good content and you hope that the right people will link to you. Another way to do it is making tools like this. We created this SEO tool that helps people, gives people free value because they can use, they can find the right keywords and stuff like that with the hope that people are going to backlink to this tool. That's the only reason why we built this. Finally, the other way to get them is to get someone else to do it for you. Now, Google says that they don't condone buying backlinks, but their API documentation data got leaked last year and it was clear to see that backlinks still very much matter. But can you buy backlinks? Well, yes and no. Essentially, you can buy them outright, although it's not a good idea to do so, particularly not from Fiverr. So then well, what do you do? Because it can take a long while to actually get a backlink from a website that you want. You have to manually reach out to them. You have to tell them why they should link to you. You either have a really good content that you think is gonna add more value if they link to that from a blog post. And it takes a lot of research to find out if the website that you want a backlink from is high quality and a bunch of a hundred of other attributes that you need to think about. So to be very, very honest, I leave it to the experts for this. I know enough about backlinking to realize when somebody's doing incorrectly, and that is enough for me, and I've worked with agencies like Get Me Links all the time that do the work for me. We create a strategy together in terms of what kind of links that we want, who we want linking to us, and they do the outreaching and the guest posting for me. A little bit cheeky, but it's a, it's a strategy that you really need to do if you want to compete against the big players. Get Me Links offer a free backlinking strategy, no strings attached. It's 15 minutes where they provide you advice. It's a great way to get started. I'll leave a resource, I'll leave a link to the resource of that below. And this is where a lot of people forget that if they don't do a correct backlinking strategy, it's practically impossible to compete with someone that has been around for quite some time, making it very difficult to compete with them. Let's say I've got two identical websites practically in terms of content or services. One's new and has no backlinks. One has a bit of age to it. Let's say it's been around for a couple of years and 50 other domains are ranking to it. Google is 100% going to rank the website with more backlinks because it's been trusted more. That's just the reality of the way SEO works and that's the game we need to play. I hope that helps. If you found this video valuable, I recommend you consider subscribing to the channel, maybe like this video. If you wanna learn how to maximize your SEO with AI tools and automations and get a lot of support while you're doing so, I'll leave a link to our community, the AI Ranking School community, so you can try it out if it's for you. We have a premium community where we give a lot more support, high valuable content, the templates that are already built for you that have been tried and tested. But if you wanna not commit to something paid because the premium community is $47 a month, you can cancel any time. We have a free community, AI Ranking Free, that is a great way to get you started. We have an AI powered SEO Kickstarter to show you how to do these things in a basic manner and content automation as well, how to start doing these content at large scale correctly. If you're interested in that, again, I'll leave it linked below. And if you have any questions on what I spoke about on why your SEO sucks and how to fix it, make sure you leave it in the comments below and I love to answer your questions as soon as I can. Again, thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.